for reading our scripture this morning. And pastor is going to lift up a few more verses in addition to what was already read. Daniel chapter 6, starting with verse 14. Daniel chapter 6, starting with verse 14. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and make every effort until sundown to save him. Then the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him, Remember, your majesty, that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, uh, no decree or edict that the king issues uh, can be changed. Uh, so the king gave the order and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually rescue you. A star was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring uh, and with the rings of his noble uh, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without entertainment being brought to him. And he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, uh, Daniel, servant of the living God, uh, has your God, uh, whom you serve continually, uh, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, uh, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel, uh, and he shut the mouths of the lions. Uh, they have not hurt me, uh, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel uh, out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. And beloved, for a little while, I want us to reflect on this thought. The great comeback. Uh -huh. The great comeback. May we bow, may we pray. Father, I love you. God, I'm so glad that you are not a wishy-washy God. Amen. Um, but God, right now, I'm asking for you to bless, Lord. Uh, your people have pressed their way. Some have been fasting. Uh, some are believing and trusting you, God. Uh, so, Lord, create in me a clean heart uh, and renew a right spirit within me. Uh, because it's not by might nor by power, uh, but by your spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Uh, in Jesus Jesus name I do pray and the people of God said amen uh, beloved the great uh -huh, uh, come back I'm certain uh, that many under the sound of my voice uh, that you have heard the expression uh, that every setback uh, is a setup uh, for even greater comeback. Oh, they didn't get it. Uh huh. I'm going to repeat that. Uh, that every setback uh, is a setup uh, for an even greater uh, comeback. Uh, now, if the truth be told, Old. One too many setbacks, uh, beloved, in the comeback, uh, it kind of seems a little doubtful. Uh, allow me to press my claim. Uh, the mortgage was denied, uh, or your resume was rejected. Uh, the first thing you say is, why should I apply again? Uh, I failed my calculus test. Uh, I failed my trigonometry exam. Uh, so what's the use of studying, uh, or why should I come to tutoring at all? Uh, I didn't make the basketball team. So why should I practice on my own? I've tried that tithing. I've tried giving offerings, but I'm still in debt. I've tried this thing called fasting. I even have been praying morning, noon, and night. But my change, beloved, has not come. 
my setbacks uh, make my comebacks uh, seem to be doubtful. Uh, but beloved in life, uh, let me clue you in on something, uh, that there are setbacks. Uh, and even on this spiritual journey, beloved, uh, there will be setbacks. Uh, and if you listen uh, to the wrong voice, uh, and if you buy uh, into the wrong rhetoric, uh, you're going to start to feel like a failure. But let me clue you in on something. Eh? Don't you know that Satan, uh, that he rejoices uh, in our setbacks? Uh, don't you know uh, that Satan uh, will throw a party uh, in the midst of our tears? Uh, don't you know this morning that Satan uh, wants you to throw in the towel? Uh, he wants you to call it quits. Uh, that Satan will remind you uh, that you are just foolish uh, to think that your dreams uh, and your goals and your promises from God that they're going to come true. But I'm here to tell you, or I'm here to remind you, that Satan is still a liar. I don't care how good that he may be at his job. Praise him, baby. That Satan is still a liar. That Satan, he ain't going to stop accusing you. But we serve a God that's not going to stop fighting on your behalf. So don't you dare stop trusting because don't you know that every opportunity, amen, every, every problem or every challenge that you may experience, beloved, that it's just the opportunity for you to trust God in order for him to show out in your life. Sometimes you got to remind yourself uh, that the battle is not yours, uh, that the battle is the Lord. Uh, you got to remind yourself, uh, Lord, help me to hold my mute. Uh, you got to stand still uh, so you can see the salvation of the Lord. Come on, Holy Ghost. Uh, so, beloved, how? How do we handle uh, the setbacks. Well, that's why we're studying Daniel this morning. Because I believe we can take a cue from the brother. But see, you got to have a little biblical history about Daniel in order for you to fully embrace the text. Amen. So, so Daniel, amen. You got to recall, amen, that he's from Israel. Amen. And that King Nebuchadnezzar, that he invaded, come on, y'all, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, and when he invaded Jerusalem, he not only took all sacred objects from the temple, but he took the crown, the crown. He took leaders, amen. He took the best. He took the brightest. He took the smartest. He took the gifted to be his servants in Babylon. In other words, Daniel didn't go to Babylon on his own. That brother was forced to go to Babylon. And now he finds himself worshiping among pagan gods. And even though everywhere he turned, he might have saw an idol. He might have saw a pagan. He decided, to, I'm going to stand firm in my faith. When Daniel was forced to eat rich food and eat fine, drink fine wine. Stay with me. That's why we have the Daniel fast. He said, I refuse to defile myself. That brother stood firm in the faith and decided, I'm just going to eat vegetables and I'm just going to drink water. When King Nebuchadnezzar, when he had a dream, that brother called for his magicians, uh, and he called for his enchanters, uh, and he called for his sorcerers, uh, and he called for his astrologers. Uh, he told them, you better get here, uh, and you better interpret this dream. Uh, but check this out. Uh, the king refused them uh, to tell them what the dream was. But they had to interpret it like they were mind readers. Their life was on the line. The king threatened, if you don't get it, if you don't interpret this dream, I'm going to have you ask 
persecuted. But you see, some of us, we read our horoscopes to determine if we're going to have a good day. Some of us, uh -huh, uh, we get our palm red uh, trying to determine how bright our future going to be. I know I'm in the house. Uh, I know some of us still waste our money uh, calling the psychic uh -huh, uh, hotline. Uh, but let me tell you something this morning. Uh, in time like these, uh, the only person you need to call on uh, is the Lord. Uh, that Daniel knew uh, that only the God in heaven uh, could reveal secrets. Amen. In the other words, uh, Daniel stood firm in the faith. Uh, he called the Lord name fell on his knees and asked the Lord to help him in the time of trouble. When they got Daniel to interpret that dream, he called a prayer meeting, Brother G. He called a prayer lock in with the other three Hebrew boys. I'm talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And all of a sudden, they started praising the Lord. Amen. I keep trying to tell you that there's power in praise. Amen. And they prayed. And they started asking God for mercy. They said, Lord, I don't know how to do it. If you don't help me, it cannot be done. Reveal to us the secrets of the dream. And the Lord heard their plea. Daniel not only told the king the dream, but he was able to interpret the dream. And as a result, uh, that brother went from being a servant, uh-huh, and he was put in charge of all the wise men. Every time that Daniel was presented a setback, Daniel had a great comeback. But you see, Daniel's comeback, it was tied to his daily decisions. And his daily decision was that I'm going to stand firm in my faith. He stood firm in the faith by doing what? By praying through and praising through. This ain't nothing new. I've been talking about it for the past four weeks. He's been praying through and he's been praising through. And are you standing firm in the faith this morning? When your back is against the wall? When the pressure is mounting? When you're tempted to do the wrong thing? Are you making a decision to stand firm in the faith? Are you praying through? Are you praising through? Or are you caving in under pressure? Well, beloved, as we continue to press our way through the circle maker, that's what we've been studying, amen, on Wednesdays. Mark Batterson says, and I quote, he said, for better or for worse, he says that your destiny is the result of your daily decisions and defining decisions. He says if you make good decisions on a daily basis, that it has a cumulative of effect that pays dividends the rest of your life. What are you trying to say, preacher? That you got to make a decision to not look to the left or look to the right, but you got to keep your mind on Jesus. You got to look to the hills from which cometh your help, knowing that all your help, come on y'all, comes from the Lord. And when you are about to lose your mind up in here, you got to remember that thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is staying on thee. Why? Because he trusts in thee. Keeping our eyes on the Lord makes sin and compromise uh, lose their attraction. Uh, too often, beloved, uh, our bad decisions uh, have gotten us where we don't want to be. Uh, we make one bad decision uh, after another. Uh, our bad decisions, uh, they may appear to open doors at the time, but beloved, uh, that open door uh, is only open temporarily, and you're going to end up right back where you started from. 
You see, Psalm under the sound of my voice. You're caught up in positions where you can't see the forest. Woo, come on, that's it, baby, from the trees. So you keep thinking that you're in control of the situation. Uh, but if the truth be told, the situation, come on, y'all, uh, is in control of you. Uh, and you even wonder uh, how in the world uh, you got yourself uh, in this predicament, uh, in this situation, uh, in this circumstance, uh, in the first place. But uh, well, let me let you in on something. Uh, like I told a friend of mine, uh, baby, this is how you got in that predicament. Uh, it was one appetizer, uh, one entree, uh, one glass of wine, uh, one dessert, uh, and one cup of coffee uh, at a time. Uh, and now you have the audacity uh, that you're surrounded by the enemy, uh, and you wonder how you're going to get out of this mess. Uh, if God has not changed the situation, uh, then maybe God is telling you that you need to change. Your destiny is the result of your daily decisions. But when we're faithful to God, even in a few things, don't you know that God can use us to do big things? Uh, they still don't have it yet, Jesus. We're talking about the great comeback, uh, that thou has been faithful over a few things that I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Somehow, Daniel realized uh, that every problem he had, that every obstacle he faced, uh, that every setback uh, had to be a new opportunity uh, for him to trust God uh, just a little bit more. Uh, because trusting God uh, kept on opening doors for Daniel. Uh, now Daniel, uh, in our text uh, that Elias read, uh, that brother now is second in command. Hey! See, there's a theme that's running through Daniel that no matter what the setback is, that if you approach every situation and every opportunity and every challenge and every person, you got to face it in prayer. You got to humble yourself. Call on the name of the Lord. I don't know what to do, Lord, but what I do know is I need you to move on my behalf. Somehow Daniel knew that prayer changes things. And that prayer didn't change the situation. That prayer would strengthen him to get through the situation. You know the song of old. Lord, don't move my mountain, but give me what? The strength. So no matter what was thrown Daniel's way, what predicament he found himself in. Daniel refused to stop praying. And because he refused to stop praying, God refused to stop elevating. So you miss it. And he refused to stop promoting. You tell me, how do you go from being a slave, a servant, to a governor? That's what it was, boo! Think about it. How do you go from being a prisoner of war to being like a prime minister? You, you need to think about it. How do you go from the outhouse to the White House? You need to think about it. How do you go from drugging and thugging to an usher or a preacher? You want to know the answer? It's only God. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. You got to stand firm in the faith. You got to pray through. You got to pray through. Then your enemy will become your footstool. That God still will take the foolish things. He'll confine the wise. You never know where you'll go, what you'll do, or who you mean. I'm talking about the great combat. You see, beloved, the more... Daniel was elevated. In other words, the more haters he had. 
See, that's, that's what you need to ask God to deliver you from. You see, some of y'all are in bondage to people. Amen. You need to ask God to deliver you from that. Because it's some folk you never going to please. I don't care if you turn around, if you on your head, if you try to do two steps, whatever you do to try to please them, they can't be pleased. But let me tell you something. If you don't have any haters, then maybe you're not doing anything. If they didn't get that, Brother Gene, maybe you're not working in the Lord's kingdom. Maybe you're not sacrificing. Maybe you're not trying to give to God any of your time or any of your talents or any of your offerings. Amen. If you don't have any haters, maybe you're not doing nothing. The Bible said uh, that Daniel was faithful. That Daniel was uh, honest uh, and Daniel was responsible uh, and his haters uh, couldn't find anything uh, to criticize him about. Uh, however, the haters uh, had a made up mind. You know, folk got a made up mind. I don't care if they got to stay up all night long uh, calling a meeting at 3 o'clock in the morning uh, so that they can plot uh, and scheme uh, and come up against you. Uh, don't you know that Satan uh, has an army? Uh, uh, support us uh, that he got his ears, amen. He got folk uh, assigned to you uh, to harass you, uh, to trick you, uh, to try to trip you up. Daniel was hated because he was godly and he was successful. But you got to realize that faith ain't fair. Oh, you ain't catch that. You want to be elevated. You keep asking God to make you better. Bear a new level is a new devil. So in chapter 6, Daniel's not serving up under King Nebuchadnezzar no more. You know, King Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind, uh-huh, thinking he was better than God. Uh-huh, but when he humbled himself, God restored him, okay? That's another sermon, amen. But somebody needs to have caught that in the atmosphere, amen. Now Daniel uh, is serving up under a new king, uh, and this king is named Darius, uh, who rolled over a new kingdom, uh, and this kingdom of teaching is called the Medo-Persian Empire. The king's name have changed, uh, but the spiritual challenges uh, for Daniel uh, remain the same. So the question is, Will Daniel remain faithful when the pressure is on? You see, Daniel's troubles didn't come from his weakness. His trouble came from his strength. Oh, they didn't catch it. Uh Uh-huh. They come after his weakness because the rest, he was a prayer and he believed in the power of prayer. His challenges came from his strength. When trouble comes, would you be found guilty of being a Christian? Would you be found guilty of trusting in God? Would you be found guilty of praying and praising through? But you know, enemies can be cunning. Mm-hmm. That's why you need to pray for a spirit of the sun. Uh-huh. Because everybody that smile in your face, uh-huh. Hey, don't mean you a whole lot of good. Uh-huh. You got to ask the Lord to help me. Uh, Lord, give me a spirit of discernment. Uh, let me hear uh, even what they not saying. Uh, let me see uh, even what they not showing. You got to have a spirit of discernment up in here. So Daniel's enemies, uh, they started flattering him. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, but they perverted uh, King Darius' mind to pass an unchangeable edict uh, that for the next 30 days, uh, anyone uh, who prays to anybody, uh, divine or human, uh, except the King Darius, uh, would be thrown in the lion's den. Oh, I'm in the word. 
and the penalty for disobeying the king's decree was death but death in the lion's den so when Daniel was when he learned that the decree had been signed the Bible doesn't say that Daniel freaked out the Bible does not say that Daniel threw a pity party uh, the Bible says uh, that Daniel uh, he still went home uh, he went to his own upper room uh, where the windows were open uh, and he turned his face uh, toward Jerusalem uh, three times a day uh, he got down on his knees uh, he gave the Lord thanks uh, just like he done before uh, and some of us would have caved uh, on the pressure uh, Lord what I'm gonna do uh, can I call on your name anymore? Can I pray, God? I may take my life. You know the story. Daniel uh, was found guilty. But he was found guilty of praying to God and not King Darius. And as a result, uh, he was put uh, in the lion's den. And not only uh, that he was thrown uh, into a uh, lion's den, uh, the Bible says uh, that a stone was brought uh, and placed over the mouth of the den. And King Darius sealed the stone with his own royal seal. In other words, nobody uh, could rescue Daniel. Uh, nobody uh, but the Lord. But the kind of God that we serve, uh, he sent uh, an angel. Yeah, he sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth. Then those uh, who had been plotting and scheming and strategizing, who maliciously accused Daniel, were thrown into the lion's den, uh, not just by themselves, uh, but along uh, with their wives uh, and their children. And I got a footnote this, because uh, somebody need to catch this, because uh, your foolishness uh, and your scheming uh, does not only affect you, uh, but it has a tendency uh, to affect your entire household. Let me help you. The songwriter says, when you dig one ditch, what? You better dig two. The trap you set for me might be in here just for you. But let me tell you something. I believe Daniel's uh, upper room had changed locations. Uh -huh. And his upper room was now the real lion's den. That Daniel's upper room is where the battle was fought, but that's where the battle was won. In other words, Daniel fought the battle, y'all, uh, on his knees. Hey, they're going to get it later, Jesus. Uh, and what I'm trying to say is by committing uh, himself to continue in prayer, uh, he won the only battle that mattered. Uh, beloved, the real lions were not the problem. Uh, we think the miracle was that Daniel survived the night uh, with the lions. Uh, but the greater miracle uh, was that he continued to pray uh, when his life was on the line. So what do you do when they call for the lines on you? Ha! Uh -huh. The answer is, beloved, keep on serving the Lord. Keep on doing what's right. Keep on living for Christ. And then you just let the chips fall where they may. We got to pray with confidence to a God who can stop the mouths of any lion that you may face. You got to stand firm in the faith. You got to pray through. You got to praise through. Then your enemy is going to become your footstool. Ah. Because every setback is a setup for an enemy greater comeback. I'm trying to tell you, you got to elevate yourself. Uh-huh. Don't, don't be trying to address every attack. That's part of the problem. 
folk come up against you, folk want to talk about you, you feel like you got to clap back, you got to fall on your knees, ask the Lord to fight your battles, Lord I know you're able, God I want to get even, I want to give him a piece of my mind, but at the same time, I want to do what's pleasing in your sight, Lord, you said you'll fight my battles, God, have your way. Ooh, that's for somebody. Jesus Christ, he was innocent. He was envy. He was hated. He was condemned to death. In other words, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, he had some setbacks. Jesus, too, was let down into a pit of death. You better see the comparison. And the stone was rolled across the entrance. And perhaps an official seal was placed across the stone. But just as God sent an angel to Daniel, that God also sent an angel to the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you recall the testimony? He's not here. That he's risen just as he said that Jesus had the great comeback. And just remember that in this life journey, you you will have some setbacks, but every setback is a setup for an even greater comeback. People may question you and the God that you serve, baby, it's just a setup. They'll say no one can do what you do because you ain't doing nothing at all. It's a setup. I know folk, they think you're crazy. I know folk say, why you come to church? I know folk say, why you pray like that? Why you praise like that? It's just a setup. Don't you know that opposition that is going to come? But it's a setup. Folk will tell you that you're limited and you serve a limited God. It's a setup. Don't you know when they set you up, you better stand firm in the faith. You got to pray. Through. You got to pray through. Somebody said why? Because God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that work in us. I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Greater works than these shall he do. Things might not go how you want them. Winds may blow. Storms may rise. 2018 may have been a setback. But don't you know that 2019 ain't nothing but a great comeback. So don't you get weary. Don't you get weary. Don't you get weary in well doing. Because every setback. It's a setup for a greater comeback. You need to get it in your spirit. That I'm the comeback king. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let them strategize. Let them plot. Let them talk about you. Let them try to limit you. Let them try to make a mockery of you. But you got to talk to yourself. I keep trying to tell you, stop talking so much to other folk. You better talk to yourself and say, Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. 
me. Lord, I might feel lonely, but you said you'd never leave me, nor forsake me. Have mercy on me. Lord, I know you didn't leave me here to fail. You didn't bring me this far. Have mercy. Watch God move. Watch God move. Mm -hmm. Y'all know, y'all remember First Lady Michelle Obama? She said, when they go low, we go what? Hey! Come on, y'all! Yeah! Shake that stuff off! Yeah! Uh huh! Yeah! 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 Yes, God! Yeah! I've come too far from where I started from. But let me clue you in on something. Nobody told me that the road would be easy, but you didn't bring me this far. Yeah. 